Um, so our speakers today, um, the first one, Paul Heber, is the newest uh, addition to the MPIS team. Um, his background is, was from a uh, nationally traded broker, and his entire career has been spent in uh, public entity pooling for employee benefits. So he is a welcome addition to our team, and um, we're, we're happy to have him. And we're going to count on his expertise to uh, move this forward. And uh, tag teaming with Paul today is Travis Childers. Uh, you probably all know Travis Childers. Like Shane said, if there's food or drink there, most likely drink, Travis is there. He and I tag team on all the association events, and um, we have a lot, of, a lot of fun together. But uh, Travis's bio actually is um, also a publicly traded uh, national broker. We actually all worked together before forming this organization, and we're happy to have him here. So uh, in his role here with Ballator, um, he is business development director. So he's, um, his primary role is making sure that our agent partners are happy and uh, bringing in business and keeping you all happy. So take it away, folks. So Paul, can we call this the Paul and Travis show? I think maybe sure. we can do it on, on an annual basis here at the conference. But kind of what Hasib had mentioned, I just want to lead in with the, why are we here? Well, the, the answer to the question is, you know, there's a lot of galas that we do, sponsorships. Um, it could be a conference like today or at an executive board meeting, which many of you have seen me do check presentations. But the bottom line is the, the, the question is always, you know, look, Travis, we love your PNC. We love the coverage. We love the balance. You're making my CFO happy. Happy. You got me through that sticky claim situation, but the fact of the matter is, I am drowning on health insurance. The increases are terrible. I have to do coverage takeaways with my, with my employees that are on a granular level taking care of the services out there in the community. So how can we right the ship? Can you do anything? So we're proud to announce that Fit Health is already here. We, we got some folks in the program. Now I will say that we'll talk about in, in deeper into the program or the presentation that it's very geographically specific right now, okay? But we have Paul. That, that come on board. Now, I finally got me a wingman um, to hang with. And I, can I get, get another round of applause with, with Paul on board now? Thank you. Okay, so Paul, with his expertise and his background with, with Gallagher, he comes from a long tenure, obviously, with public entity and group purchasing on the group health side, and he's going to help us fix that. So deeper in the presentation, we'll talk about our trading partners and where Paul can help us navigate to get you where you all want to be because we've done some presentations already to you, the membership on association level, and also talk with some brokers, you know, Bouchard, Ricky Bouchard was very instrumental. You know, Travis, Humana may not be the fit. Most of my folks are in the rural area. We're gonna fix that, but be very patient with us. So without further ado, Paul, you wanna kinda get going and I'll sure. step in whenever. So. They gave me four months to get this program really up and running, and I've been here three weeks and three, you know, three weeks and three months. So I need commitments from all of you before we leave today, please, um, or else you won't see me at the next meeting. I'm just teasing. Um, so, by background, we all know that this was um, something we've been working on. Um, we years ago had the Florida statutes amended to allow for an association plan in the health arena for nonprofits on a fully insured basis. So, you know, this group, by virtue of its geography and by the industry that you're in was able to create an association so we have an association plan that we have now available to you on a fully insured basis obviously there was a lot of need as, as travis said you've been asking for some support in this area so you know as, as building any type of program obviously we needed to create something that was going to meet your needs and that you would find value in so just on a very high level um, you know, the areas that we obviously targeted, you know, we needed to create something that was going to be a differentiator in the market, something that was competitive in the market. Um, we needed something that was going to be um, basically risk averse. You know, when you have a tight budget, there's nothing better than being able to budget and plan for expenses. So when you have a fully insured program, even though self-funding in certain circumstances, in a lot of circumstances, can be economically beneficial in certain industries where you have very tight revenue streams coming in, you can sleep at night because you know it's been budgeted for. So this you know, is, is a fully insured arrangement. All the risk falls on the insurer. One-stop shopping. Um, 
you know, you can shop around, you can have different carriers providing different benefits, but we wanted to be able to bring you a package of benefits that was going to meet all of your employee benefit needs without you having to scramble around and find everything on your own. So, and then you can tie a program together and make it make sense from a whole picture standpoint. And then lastly, something that's customizable. You, know, you want to make sure that you've got a program that even though it's um, bundled, it's, it's customizable to you and your needs and your employees and what you're trying to accomplish. And Paul, I think this is, I mean, to relate to the property and casualty that you're, you're accustomed to with this and have been, I mean, goodness, Fit's been around for 12, 13 years now. We started out small, right? Primarily work comp and property. All right, so current state of the market on Fit is we're approaching $70 million in premium and all lines of coverage offered. So the same concept is gonna take place and hold with the Fit Health pieces. We got somewhere to start and we're gonna grow upon that and make sure that we provide something to you and let's say in the next 10 years or less, that's gonna fit perfectly for you. So it's gonna work just like the property and casualty. What I'm gonna do basically is I'm gonna walk through the benefits of the program and really highlight the differentiators. The reason why you as an organization may want to consider fit health. Um, so rather than going through every detail, this is not an open enrollment meeting, we're going to highlight some of the things that will be beneficial to you that you'll see that would differentiate fit health from what else you might be looking at when you're looking at your benefits program. So as Travis said, we're currently with Humana. So for our medical and then a couple other lines of coverage, we've rolled out benefits through Humana. Um, like any medical benefit offering, they've got their traditional plans, their PPOs and their HMOs with varying levels of co-pays and deductibles and co-insurance. We've got the traditional high deductible health plan where you know a lot of stuff comes out of pocket before the benefits kick in. Health savings accounts where you get people to put money aside, you can also put money in. Um, the one differentiator here for the medical, Humana created basically a virtual first plan it's by far the least expensive plan when you look at premium, but what it does, it drives people to use virtual care and urgent care. So any telemedicine call is unlimited, any trip to the urgent care is unlimited. Prescriptions, the majority that you would take are at a $5 copay, labs and x-rays for the majority, $5 copay. So like me, last year the only time I ever used my, my medical plan was urgent care, telemedicine and any little prescription I needed. So for something like me, it would have been a perfect fit, especially in areas where you may be a little bit remote, where you don't have easy access to providers. Virtual care is a great solution for that. Um, and then what it does, if you need something beyond virtual care, they will actually be your concierge and they will coordinate you going to a specialist or whatever else you need. So it's really bringing back the concept of having a primary care provider that you have access to that's gonna coordinate your care for you. And again, by far the cheapest. Paul, I'll, I'll, I'll take this one. This, this is one that's been personal to me. <laughs> Last few weeks, FSU went 0-4. The Bucks had a loss. And during that week of the 0-4 and, and the Buck loss, the Dollar General did not have Bush Light on, on sale. So <laughs> it was, trust me, when, it, when I walked back into work Monday after that, Hasib and Peter were looking at me, you need to call, buddy. Sorry, Paul. Thank you for that. Um, you know, in benefits, EAP, it was always something that's been there. It's never been particularly highlighted until last year with COVID. Um, you all of a sudden had your entire lives turned upside down by working remote, not being able to socialize with people, um, having your entire family in the house at the same time, dealing with somebody who may be sick or maybe in the hospital that you can't see, that you can't care for. So it, all of a sudden, we had issues, issues with our employees that they're dealing with that is distracting them from their job. And anytime we talk about wellness or well-being, you know, we're not just talking about somebody's health, we're talking about their emotional well-being, their financial well-being, their career well-being. So EAP has become, and life services have become a big part of any benefits program of late because people are really understanding that there's a connection between how somebody is dealing with their own life issues and how that comes to work with them. And being able to provide something that's gonna fix those issues or give somebody support really helps an employer um, tremendously. So EAP is included with Humana um, at no additional cost. Wellness program, Boy, 
Humana has an award-winning Go365 wellness program that is included as part of the Humana offering. There are discount programs available through Humana. Um, you, if you've had Humana in the past or have them today, you may already be enjoying these. Smaller employers, what the discount program is, it's if individuals participate in the wellness program, they earn points, they reach a status, and the premium for that individual actually gets reduced. What we're offering is the larger program that's available to only employers that are 100 plus, but it would be available to anybody in Fit Health, and the discounts at the employer level. So the total cost of premium is gonna potentially be discounted based on the entire employee population's participation in the wellness program. And through the program, it can be up to an 8% reduction in premium, which is actually a big number because 8% is typically what we see every year as medical trend. So by having people in a wellness program that are actively participating, you can actually negate medical trend and keep a, a flat renewal. Dental. Um, there's three dental programs available, again, through Humana. Medical Humana is not, um, they don't have the, the footprint in Florida that we'd like. They're very strong in Tampa area, they're very strong in South Florida, they're very strong in Orlando. Dental Humana is awesome, their footprint is everywhere. Dental, you can actually purchase Humana's dental through Fit Health, separate from the medical. Same with vision, we'll talk about that in a second. The differentiators here, um, what Humana did, they actually filed rates that are fixed for Fit Health. So you as an employer aren't submitting your census information to get premium rates. There's actually a set rate that is uniform across the Fit Health pool for all the membership. So that's an advantage. The other thing is the preventive cleanings and the um, extended annual maximum. You know, I go to the dentist twice a year every time they say, you're not flossing. I'm like, yes, I am flossing. But if I could go three times a year, um, maybe I wouldn't get that argument every time I go. Um, Extend the annual maximum. Once you hit your annual max, you get to keep using the plan and still get negotiated discounts. So great things for your employees. Vision, vision's vision. It's the same thing as dental. It's a, f a filed rate with the state fixed for fit health. And it's also available standalone. I want to talk about now, we're going to move from uh, from Humana over to Colonial Life. So we have a voluntary benefits offering built into the program that is available. Again, it is separate from Humana, so it is able to be purchased separate from Humana, and it brings um, different things with it. So it offers seven different lines of insurance coverage for your employees, accident, cancer, critical illness, dental disability, hospital indemnity, and life. Um, what are some of the advantages of doing this? Well, one, doing it through the Fit Health program, we've negotiated and have um, some benefits that are guaranteed to us that aren't necessarily available if you went to them directly. One is something called guarantee issue. So with accident, with um, whole life insurance, and with disability, there's a guaranteed benefit, there's a guaranteed issued amount that they will give you without any underwriting and no participation requirements. So you could have one person sign up and they could get the full guaranteed issue amount of the benefit that they want and there's no other issues or concerns. So that's something that is definitely a value to anybody using the Colonial program through Fit Health. The other thing is, you know, people often question what's the value of offering these types of products because they're coming out of the employee's paycheck. These are usually 100% employee paid. And when you have employees that don't make a lot of money, the last thing you want to do is rolling stuff out to them that they're going to spend money on needlessly. So you want to make sure that you're giving them something that they're going to benefit from. Not only does it benefit them, it benefits you as an employer. And on the boxes on the side, you know, survey data has shown that there are some direct savings that employers have, have identified from offering voluntary products. A couple of them in the middle, increased participation in cost favorable plans. Obviously, when you've got a plan that's got a higher deductible and a higher out-of-pocket maximum, which means employees are going to pay more for their coverage, that's scary because it leaves them exposed if they have an issue. What the voluntary product offerings do is they fill in gaps financially. So if somebody ends up in an accident or has to go to the hospital or comes up with a condition that they didn't know they had, they've got coverage for it. So they're more likely, when they have that type of coverage, to enroll in a least expensive plan with higher deductibles, because they're gonna be covered financially, and the employer is gonna 
benefit from having their employees enroll in plans that have lower premium. Um, so things like that, the voluntary benefits actually do provide an economic benefit to the employer in addition to benefiting employees financially if they have unexpected things pop up. Value adds. This also ties into the concept of well-being and I'm going to throw in the word engagement on top of wellness. Your employees come to work, they carry all the issues with them. So to the extent that you can help them, give them opportunities to alleviate whatever issues they're dealing with in their life, um, the better off you're going to be, the more engaged employees you're going to have because they're focused on their job. They're not focused on, oh my god, I've got this bill to pay, or I've got student loan debt that I don't know how to pay back, or I've got a sick parent that I need to deal with. So through Colonial, just value added, they offer one additional telemedicine benefits, but they offer a free accidental death and dismemberment benefit. They have a student loan repayment program where they can help individuals dealing with that high debt from school, how to handle that, other discount programs. So a lot of things that will help round out the benefits package to make your employees walk away from work with a, a cleaner conscience and not having the issues at home. Flexible enrollment. Um, big challenge for most employers is how to handle the open enrollment process, who's going to educate the employees, do the employees even know what they're, what they're buying, do they understand the benefits, and for the most part, a lot of employees don't. They get an email from HR saying, oh, we're going through open enrollment. They attach a benefit guide that says, here, read this and figure it out. Um, not a lot of help or support. When you go through Colonial, Colonial will offer, if you're buying those voluntary products, they will offer actual enrollers who will have one-on-one -on -one conversations with each employee. There's a digital postcard that they will send out that will allow them to log in and schedule an appointment. So I can say on Thursday at 2.15, I want to have an appointment with an enroller who will get on the phone, they'll walk you through the benefits, they'll walk you through the options, and they'll prepare all that for you. And at the end of open enrollment, the employer gets a spreadsheet with all the employees and what the enrollments were. And it gives the employees personalized attention and ability to get some information on benefits. And there's, it's not just that. There's other ways that they can interface with the employees through communications. So they will also create email campaigns, digital postcards, um, benefits booklets, uh, education websites, group meetings. So basically, when you're looking at the top challenges of benefits and how to communicate to employees, they've thought through what the biggest issues are, and they've come up with solutions to make sure that the open enrollment process is highly engaged and successful. Talked a little bit about the two companies we're working with, Humana and Colonial Life. Um, acknowledging that we have a, um, a gap on the medical side in, in footprint, obviously we're gonna keep our eyes open to exploring other options. With Humana, but you know, we need to basically have a program that's gonna benefit you and be available to you where you are. So, I will mention though, don't shy away from it. So in other words, Humana, it, through their marketing efforts and communication base with us is they are wanting to progressively expand their provider network and that's what they're moving towards is what they're promise, promising us on that now. Paul is going to do some background, background check on some of the, the counties or cities or towns of what improvements they made, but don't shy away from Humana. You folks in South Florida, just geographically specifically where they really want to target, they will knock it out of the park on you know pricing. So you folks that are in South Florida sitting in the audience today or in a metro area, Humana is a fix and it will work. They're, um, they're decent in like the Jacksonville area, if that's where you're asking. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're decent there. Um, probably not their strongest area, but they have a good presence there. So, Paul, you could run a, if, if in the event we get an option for you from Humana, we can do a disruption report mm -hmm. to where it would show the doctors and the differences between those two? Yeah, no, absolutely. And that would be the, if I knew you were in an area that was kind of questionable, I mean, even if you're not, I would still run it. But we would basically want to get a, um, an understanding of who the currently utilized providers are by your employees. And what we do is we share that with Humana and they can tell us how they stack up 
network so we can see if there'd be disruption or not based on Humana's network versus your current carrier. And that, that would always be my first step, especially in a situation like this where we know that there's possible disruption. Couple things to end with. Um, early 2022, um, we're planning to roll out a employee benefits benchmarking survey. Um, since we've got this captive audience, uh, we've got this captive pool of nonprofits, um, we thought it made sense to create a survey that was specific to your industry and your geography. Because most surveys that you find, the, the benchmarking data, it's decent, but you know, it doesn't help you to know what people in Georgia and Alabama are doing. You really want to know what people in Florida are doing. And you don't necessarily care what people in retail and manufacturing are doing. You want to know what people in the social services and nonprofit space are doing. So, so this, this is the ask. We're, we're going to send this survey out. And we need your, desperately need your participation in that. And it's only going to be about, what, 10, 15 minutes. But it, what we're going to do with the data is Round that up to 20, maybe. <laughs> And there may be a gift card included in it. We're, we're going to try to get it at least where your benefits department, your risk manager, or whoever um, is handling your benefits internally. But the key to the data is this. You know, if you've, I've gotten feedback from brokers and also the members that Humana may or may not be a fit for me. Travis, can you get Blue Cross? And I need this data so we can take it to them and say, hey, here's, you know, how you match up to your peers. Here's what your deductibles are, maybe on an average. You know, here's your, your, your contributions. Here's your cost spend back to your employees. So this is going to give the ability for y'all, and we'll give the, back, the data back to you to where you can do some benchmarking. So I know there's folks in South Florida, you know, that want to know, well, how do I match up the folks up in the panhandle in those rural areas? So this data will be able to give you the opportunity to do that. And I think in the end, you could take this data to your lobbyist and say, hey, my spend is really getting out of control on the health insurance side. Can I secure more funding, you know, for, for us on the nonprofit? So there, there, there is advantages to that. Um, obviously, we'll share it with our, our, our brokers as well to where it kind of gives them directions. You know, hey, this is, this is a good handle of plan designs uh, that we want to offer within any program. It could be Humana, it could be Blue Cross or whomever. But I think this would be important information to have so Paul can take that and run with it to the providers that y'all want us to secure for y'all. You're probably used to it now, what on a payroll study. It's, it's similar to that. So this is the ask. If you could please complete this for us, it would be very, very helpful. I have, I have another ask too. Okay. So I'm a, I'm a big buy-in person. I like people to have participation in the process. So one, I'm going to each of the associations in the state because I want them to, one, help distribute it, not just to the fit folks, but also to anybody else in their membership who's not part of it, because I want as broad of a selection of nonprofits as I can. Um, two, I'm going to ask them for their feedback with regard to the questions we're asking to make sure we're soliciting the right questions and answers that's going to give you valuable information. But I want that same, I'm going to make that same ask to you folks. If there are things that you're curious about or that you would use in your strategy for planning for benefits, let me know, because I want to make sure I'm building that in. Because at the end of the day, a report with data is only valuable if you're going to find value in it. So I want to know what you need to know to help your jobs easier and help your planning easier. So that's going to be my ask of you as well as we're getting closer to finalizing this and releasing it. Last thing is um, just about some resources. So if you walk by the table outside, there's a little postcard. Um, we have a Fit Health landing page, um, and on that postcard outside, well, you can get there through the, the Ballator website, um, but also on that postcard, there's a QR code that you can scan, and it'll bring you right to the Fit Health landing page, so it'll give you information kind of like I summarized today. Also on that landing page is a frequently asked questions. So it's, I don't know, probably 12 pages worth of question and answers that will answer a lot of your specific questions about the program itself and what the benefits are and what the limitations are. So if you've got some specific questions, please feel free to call me directly. I'd love to talk to you and answer them. But you can also use that FAQ to answer some questions yourself um, and just give you some general knowledge about the Fit Health program. And that's basically it. I mean, you know, obviously we want to help you um, in your benefits program, in your employees' wellness and well-being. So whatever we can continue doing in that regard, 
happy to help, open to your suggestions, and this is a, a work in progress. So it'll keep evolving for the better, um, and we'd love to have your input along the way. And how do you get started? It's through our preferred agent network. So the folks that Shane had listed up on the board earlier that is, that's on our agent panel, just utilize them. We'll flow our quotes through through the preferred partners we work with right now. So just encourage them. You folks that fit Humana right now, definitely send it in. Let's see what we can do. And then also, please commit to do that data survey so we can get that benchmark material to those carriers that y'all want. Thank you. Thank you. Any, any questions? We didn't even ask if anybody had. Oh, so by way of my, by, by way of my background, um, I'm actually an employee benefits attorney. So I went to law school, um, have my active license in the bar in a couple states. Um, and I started getting into benefits from a compliance standpoint. So I've done employee benefits compliance for 30-ish years at this point. Um, so one, I'm always a resource for one, any employee benefits question. Um, definitely a resource for any employee benefits compliance question. So you can always feel free to reach out to me, regardless of fit health, um, if you have the need for any type of resource or general question or just something that you're struggling with or want to run by me. So that offers on the table at any time. And I'd love for my phone to ring, so please feel free to call. <laughs>